Hi YouTube! Okay, so um, I haven't made any videos in a long time and I said I would get around to making videos as they kind of come up, uh, as things kind of happen, because this is like a life uh, vlog type thing. Um, I'd like to get uh, more time to do this. I just, I do have time to do this. I just never have, uh, never ready for videos when I need to do them. So, um, this is just a real casual video, kind of an update of what's been going on. So, last week I got a, a new addition to my family. Um, I got a crested gecko for my birthday um, that I named Albion. And uh, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl yet. It's very, it's very young. It's a beautiful coloring. It's beautiful. It's got like pink, pink, uh, pinkish colored eyes, and it's like a red, very red, rusty red color. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous little gecko. And I've already kind of seen it. Like looks like it's grown a little even since I've had it in a week. Um, uh, they're very easy, easy uh, reptiles to take care of. It's a good beginner pet, great for kids. Um, although I would suggest if you are going to get a crested gecko for a child, um, to perhaps look at one that is a little bit older. Just because they're more docile as they get older, they're slower, they don't jump, um, and they're not as fast. Whereas when they're really young, they move really, really fast and jump really far, and they can hurt themselves. Um, so you want uh, someone who really knows what they're doing has a steady hand handling them. Um, I haven't handled mine too much, only at the store so far, and I haven't really handled it much since I got home. I've been trying to let it have like a good week of getting used to its habitat and getting used to the humidity and the temperatures and the noise and the sounds. And it seems like um, it's really doing well and coming along. It comes out a lot more. It's more visible now. It doesn't hide as much. So I feel that that's a good thing. Um, I also have two hamsters. I have a Robarovsky hamster named Peanut. He's really, really tiny. You can't really pick him up and handle him because he will bite you. He doesn't have very good eyesight. Um, and he just moves really, really fast. Uh, so he's more of a look, don't touch animal, but he's very cute. Very, very fun to just watch. Um, and has a pretty sweet temperament other than, you know, biting, but it doesn't bite on purpose. It's just because he uh, can't see too well. Um, then I have a Syrian hamster named Herbie, and he's uh, I'll be coming up for a year soon in, in the next couple months. Very, very docile, very sweet-tempered, friendly, friendly hamster. Um, nothing bothers him. In fact, we were moving, uh, we have a huge shelving system that we have, um, that kind of goes out, it's supposed to go out like in a garage-like type thing, but that we have our, um, tanks on right now. So we have them all together with all their supplies. And, uh, we were moving that around. It was loud, it was noisy, but it did not bother any, much of the animals too much, um, especially not Herbie. He's so mild-tempered, like, we, even when he was younger, we would do crazy things, move around him, and he would be out and about, just kind of, like, looking and being curious, not afraid of anything. So, I really, really am pleased with how he turned out. Um, I really feel like I hit the pet jackpot, because then I have my cat Jack, uh, which is actually my husband, more of my husband's, uh, cat, but he's kind of both of ours. We rescued him, when he was kind of uh, maybe less than a year old, he was still really young when we rescued him from a, our car park outside of our house. And he has, since day one, just been the friendliest, loving cat. You can do anything to him. I can pick him up. I can blow raspberries on his stomach, and he wouldn't, it wouldn't phase him. He might move away, but he definitely doesn't scratch, doesn't bite, or any of that intentionally. He barely hisses at anybody. And um, so, he's a really great, great cat. Um, and he's my cuddle monster as well. Because I do love a pet that you can really get down and cuddle, and he's the one. My others are more for 
shorter length of time interaction, but I don't love them any less. They're just as amazingly interesting and fun to learn about and see and watch grow um, as, uh, as cats and dogs. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get another cat because I did, I used to have two. I did have a Burmese, uh, cat named, um, Panda, um, and, he, uh, he was a really gorgeous blue-eyed Burmese cat. Love him to death. And if I ever get another cat, I either want to get a black cat or Burmese, like Bubby. Um, so, uh, but we no longer have Bubby, unfortunately. We couldn't keep him when we had to move. We had to find him a new home. So, um, that was really sad. It was heartbreaking for me. He was, uh, like a child to me, um, personally, um, and I miss him every day, but I know that he's, uh, taken, well taken care of and loved pro and has probably a really good home. So, that, that, that makes it a little bit better. Um, I right now live in a studio apartment, so it's kind of not cramped um they all have plenty of space that they need in their in their homes and um plenty of space for the hamsters to get out in their balls and and go around but um because you don't have to have you know we don't have to have them out too long but uh, i don't think i could add anything else right now unless it was extremely small maybe a betta fish but uh that won't be happening for a while. My next project is trying to start to grow some herbs and maybe getting in some um, plants because I would like to have a live vivarium for my crested gecko. Um, I plan on getting a bigger, a bigger setup, a bigger cage. Uh, I'd like the Sri Lanka one because it has like a big Buddha in the back type thing, and I I really like um, Eastern philosophy. Um, decorations in tanks and uh, vivariums. I don't know why, I just, it looks good to me. Um, kind of a weird thing to say or bring up, but it, it's the truth. Um, I really, really like snakes. I would love to have a snake, but my husband is very uncomfortable with having one, understandably. Um, and one day maybe I will have one um, if we have property of our own and possibly... I may even have a different kind of area or room for them, and it might be okay to have one then. But as of right now, I don't plan on any other animals. Um, I'm just going to keep the ones that I have and enjoy them as much as possible. Um, I, I never used to be one of those people... Uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. I never understood how people could get into animal hoarding. I never understood that till now. And now that I have as the four pets that I have now, I can kind of understand. You grow an attachment to these living things and you want to take out of um, a nurturing feeling, you want to take care of them. And you think that you're doing the best thing by, by taking care of them and like saving them from situations, which is good. But, uh, I don't know how anybody could have so many animals. Um, the ones that I have right now, it's easy to take care of them. I have a good routine for them, so it's easy right now. Um, but I never could before understand how people could get so many of them. And I understand a little bit more now how and why that would happen. Um, just because I really would love to have a n more, add more animals, but I know it's just not possible in where I live at the, in the current state of my finances and everything else right now couldn't be able, wouldn't be a good idea. Um, so part of being a responsible pet owner is to know your limits and don't over, uh, don't try to have too much unless you know you can provide proper care for all of your animals. You have to have a, be able to have a proper routine and care um, system for them and be able to afford everything that they need. Otherwise, it's not fair to them if they can't get things that they need to survive and have a basic lifestyle. I used to be really against um, keeping any kind of animals that require tanks or cages, I just thought it was inhumane. But I've since come to it the understanding that, well, if they're going to 
be pet stores and people out there having them. At least if I know how to properly take care of them and get them the best care within those constraints, um, then maybe um, I can help other people as well do a better job of taking care of their animals or maybe set an example or at least know how to properly. So if I see an animal in a stressed out situation and I think that I could help or give a tip or even rescue them, I know that I could, um, uh, within, you know, with, you know, as long as it doesn't it jeopardize my other animals in any way, or as long as it was totally possible to do that. But I feel like now, um, anything in captivity, if, if you're, go if there's going to be anybody having them in captivity, you might as well have people that know how to do it properly and take care, good care of them. And I'd, I'd like to, I like to learn about them. That's one of the best parts about getting a new pet is learning new things about these animals. Amazing things about these animals. It's like I became with each of them, the different species of my hamsters and, you know, my cat and my crested gecko sort of became like a little factotum for them. Um, and uh, I really enjoy that part of it. You know, that's the part that most people find boring. They just want to get to the part where you handle them and play with them. But I really enjoy knowing how to properly take care of them first and knowing all there is to know. Like, I'll watch a million YouTube videos on, on my pets. I still do every day because I find so many new information. I raid um, forums and websites. Um, I go to, like, I go to all their, um, you know, their supplies, the main big dealers of their supplies will often have really great information about their the animals that they uh, provide uh, supplies for just make sure you cross-reference everything um, search and look at everything about them you know don't take everything that you see on there believe everything but like kind of look and learn for yourself kind of learn what other people do what's right and what's wrong out of that and how you would do it you know yourself and you know before you know it you know a lot and you didn't need uh, it didn't it doesn't take much um we have so much information nowadays available to us there really is no reason for a person not to properly learn how to take care of an animal before getting it um yeah so i think that's gonna where i'm gonna cut my video off right now because i am already at 12 minutes oh my god this video is so long but i haven't made one in a while and i really wanted to share about my animals and my love for doing that right now is priority in my life so um i hope that you all enjoyed my update and i really hope that soon i will be have uh, I can have like a video where I can show you these animals and probably talk a little bit more in depth about each of one each one of them and why they're special and important to me within my spiritual path also. So um, blessed be and uh, take care everybody. Good night.